Hello AP Environmental Science students. In today's screencast, we're going to start looking at Chapter 6, The Human Population and Its Impact. All of today's notes are based off of Living in the Environment, the 16th edition, by Miller and Spoolman. Chapter 6, Section 1 covers how many people can the Earth support. We do not know how long we can continue increasing the Earth's carrying capacity for humans without seriously degrading the life support system for humans and many other species. In the past 200 years, the world population has experienced major exponential growth. And there's three major factors that account for this increase. First, humans have developed the ability to expand into diverse habitats and different climate zones. So our technology has advanced first through um, our clothing and what we could actually put on our bodies and then obviously up to today with our um, climate control systems putting it turning on the heat or the air conditioning to keep us at an optimum temperature even when it's really cold or really hot. Second, the emergence of early modern agriculture allowed more people to be fed for each unit of land area farmed. Um, we could stay in one spot. We wouldn't have to move around and hunt um, based on where our food source went, we could actually um, grow our own food and our agriculture allowed us to feed more from a smaller space. And finally, the development of sanitation systems, antibiotics and vaccines help to control disease. Population growth in developing countries is increasing 15 times faster than in developed countries. In other words, most of the world's population growth is taking place in places that are already heavily populated. By 2050, an average projection of our population is about 9.3 billion people, and 97% of that growth will be in the developing countries. So this figure looks at our projected population growths. Our median projection, like I said on the last slide, was 9.3. High projection, which you see just continues this kind of pathway going up. Um, right here and then our low projection is 7.8 and that's if we seriously put in some population control um, initiatives. So instead of asking how many people the earth can support indefinitely, some analysts believe that we should talk about the optimum sustainable population the earth might have. Um, the optimal sustainable population is based on the planet's cultural carrying capacity. This is what we discussed earlier this unit um, with Hardin's essay. And cultural carrying capacity is the optimum level that would allow most people to live re in reasonable comfort and freedom without impairing the planet's ability to sustain future generations. 